Hi everyone, it's Carolyn here and I'm dropping by today to share a project featuring one of the new September products that I'm beyond excited about as I had a minor hand in designing it. It's called the Double Slider Loop Slot Dynamics and they were designed to provide perfectly aligned loop slots for the interactive double slider cards. In the past, I've used a slot punch for this technique, but definitely struggled with aligning the slots perfectly parallel to each other. Now, that will no longer be a problem. There are two dies in this set of dynamics. Both dies can be used for horizontal positioning or vertical positioning, but each die features a different distance between the slots. In that way, they're very versatile. To demonstrate how these dies work, I've created a fun project featuring another new product, the Friendly Raccoon Stamp Set and Coordinating Dynamics. I'll also be using the Whimsical Woodgrain Background Stamp, the Interactive Label Stamp Set, the Stitched Triple Peekaboo Windows, the stitched basic edges, the stitched sentiment strips, the pull tab from the volcano dynamics, the notch die from the file folder edges, the stitched snow drifts, the hearts from the tag builder blueprints five dynamics, and the A2 stitched rectangle stacks set two dynamics. I'll also be using some craft, sour apple, poppy, and smooth white cardstock. For the slider loop, I've trimmed a half inch strip from a heavy duty Ziploc bag that I had in my stash, and I'll be using a quarter inch strip of acetate. In order to focus this video on the double slider loop mechanism, I've done much of the stamping and die cutting off camera, except where it's important to the mechanism. I'm using several different dies to create the tree trunk that will be used for one of those cute raccoons to peek out of, all of which will be listed below in the description. I used the notch die from the file folder edges dynamics to cut a notch out of the bottom of the tree trunk, and now I'm applying tape runner adhesive to the tree trunk window. I'm flipping the tree trunk over and I'm positioning it onto the right side of an A2 panel of smooth white cardstock that I've ink blended and die cut off camera. I'll give that window a good rub to adhere it securely, and then I'll carefully remove the washi tape and the rest of the tree trunk for the next step. In order to align the slots and the loop mechanism so that they're completely hidden by the tree trunk, I'm temporarily positioning the smaller of the two double slider loop slots dynamics to the back of the tree trunk with a piece of washi tape. Then I'll flip the tree trunk over and position it on the right side of the image panel. I'll use two pieces of washi to keep the die in place as I run it through my die cutting machine off camera. And this, my friends, is why I love these new dies. I'll end up with two perfectly positioned slots for my loop. My life is complete. Now I can take that half inch strip that I trimmed from a heavy duty Ziploc bag and I'll thread it through the slots to the back of the panel. I should mention that the slots are sized for a half inch loop, but if you require a loop that's wider for more stability, you can die cut the slots once and then die cut it as many times as you need for the length of slot that you need. I've trimmed off the excess strip with my scissors and I'm slightly overlapping it towards the top slot. The loop doesn't have to be perfectly taut. A little bit of slack is a-okay. I'll use my Tim Holtz tiny attacher to staple the loop together, again making sure that the staples are towards the top slot. And a couple of staples are enough to secure the loop together. I've tried other methods of securing the loop and found that the tiny staples work the best. Now I'm positioning the tree trunk back onto the right side of the image panel and I'll use that notch die again to duplicate the notch from the tree trunk. This will provide easier access to the pull tab. Now it's time to attach the pull tab to the mechanism. The science behind this double slider loop mechanism is that when you pull down on the back of the loop, the front of the loop goes up. So I want to attach the pull tab to the back of the loop using my tiny attacher and again staple it in the same area towards the top slot as I did with the loop. I've trimmed off the excess pull tab with my scissors and I'll place the two staples in the same general area as before, towards the top slot. And again, after some trial and error, I've discovered that these mini staples are the most efficient and effective way of attaching the pull tab since it gets quite a bit of torque when you pull on it. To create a channel for the pull tab or a way to keep the pull tab aligned, I'm adhering some quarter inch double-sided foam tape to both sides of the pull tab. And now we can attach that adorable raccoon from the Friendly Raccoon Stamp Set that I've stamped, colored, and die cut off camera to our loop mechanism. I've trimmed a quarter inch by two inch strip of acetate that I'll attach to the back of the raccoon with some quarter inch score tape. 
I want the raccoon to pop out of the tree trunk window, and in order to do that, he needs to extend beyond the loop. By attaching the acetate to the back of the raccoon, and then adhering it to the loop with another piece of quarter inch double sided tape, the raccoon will travel up and beyond the top of the loop when you pull down on the pull tab. This will allow the raccoon to pop up through the tree trunk window. I love engineering this stuff. Before attaching the raccoon, make sure that the pull tab is pushed up as far as it will go and position the top of the raccoon's head just below the top slot. This will assure that the raccoon is completely hidden until you pull down on that pull tab. I'm using my scissors to snip off the tip of the raccoon's tail just in case it decides to pop out on the right side. And now we can begin to assemble our scene. I die cut some sour apple cardstock using the Stitch Snowdrifts Dynamics to create some grass, and I've layered the two pieces together with some thin 3D foam squares. I don't need the entire length of the grass for my scene, so I'm positioning the tree trunk onto the image panel to give me an idea of where the grass should end, and then I'll trim off the excess with my scissors. And now I can adhere the grass to the image panel with some tape runner adhesive. Next, I'm adhering the tree trunk to the right side of the image panel with some foam squares. You'll notice that I didn't add any adhesive to the outside edge of the tree trunk in order to keep the raccoon's tail from catching on anything as he travels up and down. And I was careful to align the tree trunk window and bottom notch with the image panel. And of course I have to make sure that my mechanism is working without any interference. Woohoo! It works! I've pulled out my interactive label stamp set for a directional prompt and I'm stamping the word pull at the bottom of the pull tab using some milk chocolate dye ink. And now I can adhere the image panel to a four and a quarter inch by 11 inch craft card base that I've scored at five and a half inches and folded in half. I stamped, colored, and die cut another of the raccoon images from the Friendly Raccoon stamp set and I'm adhering him to the image panel with a foam square. I'm adhering a heart to the hand of the pop-up raccoon with some liquid adhesive. I stamped and die cut one of the sentiments from the Friendly Raccoon stamp set, and I'm adhering it just below the tree trunk window with some thin 3D foam squares. I thought it'd be fun to make the sentiment strip look like a tree branch, so I stamped and die cut one of the leaves from the same stamp set, and I'm adhering them to the image panel with more foam squares. And that'll do it for our scene building. How stinking cute is that little raccoon as he pops up through that knot hole window? I'm so excited for the potential that the new double slider loop slots dynamics have for future crafting and the ease that they'll provide me when building these types of interactive cards. Leave it to MFT to make my crafting life easier. Thanks so much for watching my video today. Be sure and check out the other videos on the MFT YouTube channel for more great content. And while you're there, why not subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Until next time, have an awesome day.